Our celebrant is Father Tom, assisted by Deacon Mike. Please join in singing our gathering.
offer us a path to eternity. Grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may for the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that a little yeast leavens all the dough? Clear out the old yeast so that you may become a fresh batch of dough, inasmuch as you are unleavened. For our Paschal Lamb, Christ, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast, not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The Word of the Lord.
Gospel according to Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they may go unanoint him. Very early when the sun had risen, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, Who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed with a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, Do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him, but go and tell his disciples and Peter, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord. As a homeowner, let a repairman through the basement, to the basement, through the family's den. He noticed under their large screen TV, large table, covered with a beautiful white cloth, candle on each corner, and a crucifix. On the other end of the den, the far end, was a large couch. And in between the two were a series a rows of folding chairs. And so he asked, Do you hold religious services here for your family and friends? No, the homeowner replied. But my wife and I sit on the couch with our kids to watch St. Elizabeth Ann's scenes, weekly recorded mass off their website. When the repairman asked, well, What's with the row of chairs? The homeowner replied, we're Catholics. We just don't feel right unless we're seated in the very last row. <laughs> Whether we're in the first or the last row or somewhere in between, the chapel cry room, the narthex, a shout out to our brothers and sisters in the parish hall right now, and some classrooms and so on. Whether we're tuning in live stream, Reading to those who will be watching this recorded Mass. This is the one of the five Masses this weekend that will be on our website. No matter how we're present for this, I think we can all agree, at least celebrating being able to celebrate Easter Masses this year deserves a rousing Alleluia. Alleluia. After all we've been through, that's all you got. <laughs> totally empty last year. It was nothing. We've come so far. Let's hope and pray that we continue to go even further. You know, sometimes I wonder if people would be happy if someone would rise from the dead. Thanks, Deacon Mike. I know Jesus did rise from the dead. Thanks for reminding me. Sometimes it seems we forget. We certainly don't live our life as if that's a reality. Made it worse, didn't it, COVID-19? Certainly created countless challenges and crosses. I know myself and many others, uh, there's a heartfelt hunger for a simple hug or a normal handshake. There's a thirst to simply touch. We want to meet without masks. And yet, I have to admit, I'm going to miss the mask because I've been able to secretly mutter and moan and do all sorts of mouth motions without you knowing what I'm saying about you. We're all going to have to be careful once the masks come off. 
At Easter, we exult in the end of sin and death. And hopefully, this is the Passover of this plague-like pandemic. We also rejoice in our rebirth, a rebirth into the new life that the risen Lord won for us. However, Easter also heralds in a whole new world, a hope-filled world, a world we can enjoy even now, if we leave the old world behind and strive to live in that whole new world. As we heard in our second reading, St. Paul said that we must clear out the old yeast, which is symbolizing the old contaminated world, as insidiously sick as our world is with coronavirus, is also sick with sin, negativity, loss of hope and faith and so on. We can change that because the Lord wants to give each one of us a new heart, a new spirit, a fresh start, and the faith we need to live in that whole new world with our faith reborn. Notice I did not say in any of that that God calls us to get things back to normal. Normal. A word that is rarely, if ever used, in conjunction with me. No, we are not called to get back to normal. We're not even called to be normal. Far from it. God calls us to something higher. Something far higher. A much greater goal. As I said on Holy Thursday night, we must use the lessons learned and the new styles and technologies that we adopted during COVID-19 crisis to make the gifts and graces of our church and of our faith even more accessible, even more meaningful, even more alive than they ever have been before. So. No matter where you are sitting right now, if you are willing to leave sin behind and to do all you can not to get things back to normal, but to help God recreate His world and make things better than ever before, if you're willing to do this, stand up to renew your baptismal promises. And since that's the end of my homily, how about another Alleluia? past the mystery, we've been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may walk with Him in newness of life. So now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism, by which we once renounce Satan and his works, and promise to serve God in His holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by His grace, in Christ Jesus our Lord, for eternal life.
said, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Exalted with Paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer you the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord.
James, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Elizabeth Ann Seton, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever.